And everybody knows you as Charlie. That's right. <laughs> went to East Limestone, went over there, went to school mm -hmm. with our illustrious Todd, Todd Tumblin over there. You were a basketball star at East Limestone. I was a basketball player, I would say. <laughs> And me and you have in common, we both went to Snead College. That's right, Snead State Boys. Go. Yeah. Parsons. Parsons. Never knew what that meant, but I think that was. Yeah, I still don't. <laughs> it was a Methodist school or something, wasn't it? Uh, Parsons have something. Anyway, yeah. it's a long story. I didn't you still don't time. know. I hope you had a better experience over there than I did. <laughs> Obviously. I had a pretty good time. I don't know about your experience, but I went in, went in Oh, 80, I had a good 80, time. 84. If you're talking about a good time, yes, I had yeah. a very good time. Yeah. That's a problem I had yeah. over there. Yeah, me too. Uh, mm -hmm. so, anyway. so what have you done with the rest of your life? Well, I've been writing. I love writing, Jamie, and so I've written top of about six, six or seven books. And most of my books are about my life. And so I've had some ups, had some downs, had some successes, had some failures. And so my latest book is about forgiving because that is terribly, terribly important to us. Yeah, well, sure before is. this interview is over, I hope you teach me how to do that because it is very difficult. But let's yeah. set your story up a little bit. You and your wife had a good, everything going on. Life mm -hmm. was good. You get a fate, a, a very bad call one yes. day from school. Tell us what yes, happened. Yes, yes. So uh, my wife uh, uh, and I had two kids, one son, one daughter. And our son was playing basketball one day, last day of basketball trials. And so she gets a phone call and says, your son has had a bad accident. Meet us at the hospital. And so I go home, pick her up, and we go to the hospital expecting to hear something. Maybe he broke a leg or broke an arm or something mm -hmm. and to only find out that he's dead. He and he's 13 years old. And he's, and, and he's 13 years old. And so he was playing basketball, wow. had a heart attack, and passed away. And we later found out that he had a very rare heart condition. Mm. This happened in 2001. And, of course, we went through a very, very, very difficult time. How do imagine. you handle something like that? My wife and I, because we handle things differently, we went our different ways as far as how to deal with it. She didn't want to talk about it, so she sank really deep into deep, dark depression. Mm -hmm. I struggled with my faith, and, but I expressed myself through writing. Well, she didn't want me to write. And I didn't want her to just sit alone all day. And so we had to come to terms. And so when we began to understand how our different personalities work, we began to work together. And so that's part of this book. What a story. Mm -hmm. you, know, you grew up, we'll get back to that and just say, you grew up the youngest of 10 kids. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, were y'all living high on the hog? Oh, no, no, no. We were living low on the rabbit. <laughs> 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 one room house. What? <laughs> a one room house. Later on, we actually graduated and got like a uh, three room house. Oh, you um, say one room. One room. Yes, one oh, room on. in all of us. I mean, we we were very very close. We had no choice, you know, and so uh, yeah. But one room house with ten kids. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you have indoor plumbing? Uh, no. No. We had the fields around us. We were creatures of nature. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, yeah, so we grew up very, very poor. And um, my mom and dad, though, were good folks. They worked hard, and they spanked us when we needed to be spanked. And now we are what we are today. So, yeah. That is uh, amazing wow. to overcome even a challenge. You were the first one to graduate college. Yes, yes, yes. Several of my siblings had, had started but, but, but never finished. And I was the only one who started and eventually finished. So, so yeah. when did you start getting into the ministry? Um, a year before my son passed away, I was called to actually preach. And so I started preaching then. Uh, I didn't start writing until about four or five months after my son died because I found that write, writing helped me. So uh, then I started teaching and started sharing what I had gone through and found that people started liking it. And so I kept writing, and I'm still, still writing today. I, to, right. I told them in between this that, you know, when you pick up that book, you think, oh, it's just all that fluff. Everybody's going to say the same things. You're pretty blunt. Yes, yes, yes. And I definitely wanted to make this book read like a story so that people can pick it up and say, hey, that happened to me. I didn't want this 
want this to sound preachy, you know. Well, forgiveness mm -hmm. is one of the hardest possible things to oh, do. I know you've got here as a Christian, I've discovered there are different levels of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can refuse to forgive, forgive a little, or walk on the same level of forgiveness that Jesus Christ walked on. Mm -hmm. Well, that's basically impossible, ain't it? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. It's, it's actually impossible for us to do. But when we become Christian, God gives us the supernatural power that then helps us to do what he wants us to do. So in this book, I'll talk about four levels, zero, one, two, and three. Okay? And zero means something really bad has happened. I can't get past it. It hurts too much, and I cannot forgive. And there are a lot of people in that state and who remain in that state for years and years and years. And it's so harmful to yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it just is. like, all right, I'll just mm -hmm. use it, make it give us up as an example. I came up with this betrayal. Mm -hmm. Then you get bitter. Yes. And then you eventually get better. But it's that transition between being portrayed by good friends, right. relatives, like a daughter, right. like to keep a granddaughter from you. Right. It's difficult to get over it, especially yes. one that you basically helped raise or did have custody yes, of exactly and all of this stuff for a short time you had them when they were a baby wow. and then all of a sudden they take them away from wow. you to get even yes Ooh. jealousy who hurts that how is you, how you handle hurt. that um i mean the thing is they're not, they're yes. not passed away <laughs> right 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 away. right so in the book i'll talk about these four different levels and at level zero i say the reason that we can't forgive is because we're constantly thinking about the hurt of it all yeah exactly you know that and that sounds very very hurtful but we have to at some point get our mind focused on the other person because people hurt us for the other person. for reasons yeah mm -hmm. people hurt, hurt, hurt us people because hurt they're hurting right and so if we're going to just continue to focus on our hurt and not address their hurt then this situation is just going to continue to occur we're going to be 90 years old and still angry still bitter and so what we have to do is we have to be the grown person in the room and say, I'm going to start the healing process, okay? Well, how many people usually come to that pity party? A lot of people. <laughs> I've been to that pity party. Everyone has. Well, yeah, yeah. I, has. I've been there for a long, long, long time. And, but I found out something, though, Jamie. The pity, pity party never gets any better. And your life never gets any better. And so emotionally, we never get any better. And so we have to leave that pity party room. So what we have to do to get off of level zero is say two words, I forgive. Regardless of how we feel, we may be angry, hurt, have shame, but if we just say those two words to say, I forgive, you know what the word forgive means? It means I'm gonna pay what you owe. So if you go down to the, to the store, Jamie, and you buy something, $5,000 worth, and then you just leave, and I come in behind you and say, I'm going to take care of James' bill, and I'm going to pay those $5,000. Thank you. Yes. Now, I would never do that, Jamie. <laughs> 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 I get your point. You say, of course, yes. you cannot remove the negative mental associations from your mind. That's right. But you can build positive associations if you're willing to interact with the people who hurt you. Oh, now that's hard. Now my question is, what if they aren't willing to right. allow you to interact with right. them? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, then you, what do you do? Yes, then you should never force Pray yourself on. on that person. Give that person some room because it does take two and you continue to pray for that person and you continue to love that person that's hard uh, yes it is it is but that's what god does for us whenever we sin he loves us anyway and he's constantly reaching out to us okay now you've got a comment in here and i've gone through this and highlighted these points i wanted to make with you this morning uh you say the christian bible is a love story mm -hmm. it describes the incredible passion the incredible passion and compassion that the Lord had for mankind. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. From Adam all the way down to Charlie <laughs> and Jamie and Gloria, we have all done something wrong, right? I know that I have. From our days in, in at the Sneed, I've done a whole lot of wrong. And so God still, though, knows my heart. And he's constantly reaching out to me saying, Charlie, 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 come back to me. And so that's how we should be. Okay. All right. 
How can people find out more about C.L. Holly and his books? They can go to our website, which is clholly.org. That's C-L-H-O-L-L-E-Y.org. You'll find all of my books on there. You'll find my story. You'll find my bios. You'll find my schedule. Mm -hmm. And you, we, in fact, Jamie, we are having a book release celebration. No. Yeah. <laughs> Great. This Saturday. And where? In Athens. Wow. At the <laughs> Revival Building, 303 West Washington Street. At 6 o'clock this Saturday, you're invited, you and Gloria. Come on out and join us. Thank you. You're going to love this book. It's well, a really well, good book. A couple of quick things here. Recognizing the signs, you've got this mm -hmm. in Chapter 12 here, Forgive. And you said mm -hmm. the goal of this book is to teach people how to forgive and create a massive army of forgiveness leaders. Mm -hmm. You're speaking one of the hardest things on earth to do. Yes. But you got to do I'd it. like to run over with that hummer I got. <laughs> No. I wouldn't suggest that. Recognizing the signs. <laughs> anger, I'm an anger management graduate. You know. It sounds like it. Yeah. How does a person speak about another? Does he or she use words or phrases yeah. that demean, insult, or make another look bad? You know, insults, constant put downs mm -hmm. of another's character, mm -hmm. stems from bitterness. Well, it's hard oh. to give up all that good stuff. It is, it is. <laughs> and sometimes it makes us feel good to actually do bad things, right? You're driving and somebody cuts you off or, 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 or whatever, or somebody lays on the horn. What is your immediate instinct? He doesn't have road rage. That's so bad. <laughs> okay. I got family rage. Okay. <laughs> Only bad doing? example. Yeah. But I just run over him and then hover But typically people react with another right, reaction. Right, 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 exactly. And so when we constantly react in hurtful, harmful ways is because we want to get back at someone. And what that means is yeah. we have not That's the whole purpose. matured enough to say, well, you hurt me, but I'm not going to hurt you back. They're just going to laugh at you. They say, I've got you right where I want you now. Yes, but... However, deep down, you know that you would help someone if they needed it. Right. You know who it was. You would. You know <laughs> All right. Now, are you available for speaking, or do you do uh, churches, or what do you do? I am. I am available for speaking, teaching on our website, clholly.org. You'll find my email address. You'll find a form on there, and you will find exactly what I speak and teach on. So uh, go to that, go to that uh, website, and you can, you can get me. All right. Well, thanks for coming up this morning. Oh, you're welcome. There's other books to choose from, too. Yeah. 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 People got six books here. Go get them. And don't forget, Saturday night. Saturday night, 6 o'clock, 303 West Washington Street, Revival Building. Yeah, we will have our book release. It's free for all. Come on out. My books will be available for $10 a piece. You don't have to buy a book in order to come. Just come. All right. So everything's going. But 10 kids in one, one, one room. room? One How room. is that possible? Uh, we all had to um, be very, very careful. Some of us had to sleep right next to one another, you know, roll on your side. And so, I, you know, we just, we just made it work. We just thought it was natural. I mean, what, to us, it wasn't, it wasn't poverty. What did, you watch on, what did you watch on TV? We didn't have a TV. I didn't. <laughs> you didn't have room for it. Man. We watched each other. <laughs> That is a great story, man. Congratulations. And sorry Thank to hear you, about man. your son, but I know yeah. you've made the most out of it. And uh, yes, love to have you back on the show and give you sure. more time. Sure, right. sure. Thanks for coming up. Thank you, John. Right, we'll take Pleasure. a break. We'll come right back. Y'all, hang on.